Hello, and welcome to Thoroughgood's video series, Powerful Pairings, Tableau and Teradata. In this video, I will be highlighting some of our best practices for designing a Teradata and Tableau solution. My name is Laura Haas, and you can contact me using the information provided below. For more information about Thoroughgood, please visit our website. In this video, I will first highlight the importance of aligning technical possibilities to business requirements. Then, share some tips for designing a robust data layer in Teradata and a well-performing dashboard in Tableau. This is the first video in our series, and you can watch the other videos using the links below. We see with many of our customers the desire to use the processing power of Teradata to support their Tableau dashboards. We want to highlight some best practices for seamlessly integrating the two technologies to ensure fast performance. To do this, we need to look at each technology separately to understand the integration possibilities. Teradata is often used as an operational data store at organizations and is known for its massively parallel processing, or MPP, which also allows for better performance. Teradata is used to capture data, however, there is an important element of staging and preparing data for reporting. For example, I may capture many millions of records of transactional data. But for reporting, I only need to look at this information from a high level of detail, such as brand or retailer. Those business requirements are defined by the business and feed into the reporting required for Tableau. Business logic, including required measures and level of detail, should be taken into consideration for the tables and views created in Teradata. So how do we do this without losing those additional details captured in Teradata? By creating a semantic data layer in Teradata, I can have the tables and views that support a variety of reporting requirements with just the data users are interested in, which will ultimately result in better performance. It's important to take into account both the technical possibilities and business requirements when designing this semantic layer. First, let's take a look at Teradata. When designing a semantic layer for Tableau, it's important to design it as a star schema instead of a snowflake. However, the physical model should store the data in a snowflake model. Notice how in the diagram below, the product and reseller tables appear to be hierarchies with relationships to additional tables. This helps avoid data redundancy when physically storing data. When connecting to Tableau, creating these extra joins can hurt performance. Therefore, creating virtual views in the semantic layer that have all product or reseller data rolled up into one view allows us to eliminate some of those joins in Tableau without storing redundant data. Another design best practice is to push calculations deeper into the architecture. All complex business calculations should be done when loading data into Teradata. Teradata has the processing power to handle complex queries, and if that logic can be defined prior to users accessing dashboards, it should be done in the physical Teradata layer. Within the views or the virtual layer, we can do simple calculations that we wouldn't want physically stored. For example, if we're concatenating a product ID and product name into a product column, we wouldn't want to store all of that data twice. So creating that column in the virtual layer would be best to avoid data redundancy. Finally, within Tableau, we want to do as few calculations as possible. While Tableau is a great data visualization software, Teradata is really built for the heavy lifting. Therefore, we recommend that only non-additive calculations, such as ratios or context-based calculations, are done in Tableau. Depending on the reporting requirements, there are other instances in which we would want the calculations done in Tableau, but that is determined case by case. It's important also to evaluate where calculations are being done throughout development and to push calculations down to deeper layers in the architecture if it makes sense for reporting and can benefit performance. Our final key best practice for designing Teradata to perform well with Tableau is the use of join indexing and partitioning to enhance performance. Join indices create a materialized view of data intersections that are frequently accessed by Tableau dashboards. Join indices may be good to use when aggregating data at a higher level. For example, if I'm looking at sales data across countries, a join index would create a smaller, aggregate view of my data at the country level, which could return results much faster than if it's querying the larger sales table. 
Partitions, on the other hand, simply create breaking points in my data based on certain columns, such as date, to limit the amount of data being pulled back based on filter selections made in Tableau. For example, if I have a monthly view of my data, I may want to partition by date, so that when I'm looking at January, my queries are directed to that partition, and we don't waste querying time to look at other months. These methods can enhance performance significantly, but it is important to note that effective join index and partitioning strategies are developed when there is a deep understanding of the Tableau report requirements and how users are accessing their data. While there are certainly other design best practices, these are just a few that we feel are particularly important. There are also design best practices in Tableau that can help with solution performance. First, limit the number of marks or data points on your visualizations. In the example below, we have a table with a lot of data points. Each cell represents a record that Tableau needs to query and pull from Teradata. The more marks on a visualization, the more data that Teradata needs to pull back, which slows querying times. Instead, limit the number of marks you pull back by filtering down the data or starting from a high level of detail and drilling down into lower levels of detail through guided analysis. In addition to limiting the number of marks on a visualization, it is also best practice to limit the number of visualizations and types of filters on a dashboard. In the example below, we have five visualizations and filters with a lot of values. Limiting the number of visualizations not only makes a simpler user interface, but it also limits the number of queries being fired to Teradata. Similar to the number of marks on visualization, having multiple visualizations on a dashboard fires multiple queries back to Teradata. We typically recommend three visualizations on a dashboard and not only fewer filters, but more careful consideration of your filter types. This leads us into our third best practice, which is to use quick filters effectively. Having a scroll bar next to the list of filters in a quick filter is usually a pretty good indication that it shouldn't be used as a drop down or list. This can often fire a query back to Teradata to populate the filter values separate from the visualizations that are already firing queries. One way to help mitigate risk of lengthy quick filters is to carefully consider which filter types you are using to help with the initial load time of your dashboards. Let's jump into Tableau to see what some of these best practices look like in action. This is my regional sales dashboard I've published to and I'm accessing from Tableau Server version 10.0. Looking at the makeup, we can see that only two visualizations are shown upon initial load. When I click on the bottom left visualization, a third visualization is populated with a scatter plot showing my individual product sales and profit. The use of this filter action limits the number of marks in the scatter plot by only showing product sales for individual resellers. Additionally, you'll notice my other two visuals have a reasonable number of marks shown, which helps my dashboard render quickly. On the right hand side, you'll notice my list of filters. Region, category, and subcategory are all fairly short lists of members. However, product would be a long list to populate. Therefore, I'm using a custom value list where users can type in the name of a product that they're looking for. This then fires a query to pull back the relevant values based on my user entered criteria. Another thing you'll notice is that I have an apply button shown on some of my drop down filters. This allows users to make multiple selections before the visualization update, which helps when a user wants to choose all of their members and then run one query instead of having their dashboard automatically update as they make selections. These are just a select few best practices that can help with the performance and user experience of your dashboards. To quickly recap, in this video, we shared some of our best practices for designing Teradata and Tableau solutions. Please check out the other videos in this series by using the links in the description below. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me using the contact information provided here. I hope you found the content of this video useful. Thank you for watching.